Okay guys, so there's one more thing we need to add. Currently, we have all the code working to pick up and drop our object. But we're not calling upon our physics handle interaction. So the way we want to do that is create a event tick. Now, if you already have an event tick somewhere and you need to connect it, say this one's connected to our uh, event tick, and then we need to add our one that we actually need to pretend that this is our node. You can just connect it to the end, or if that's something that you can't do, you can use a sequencer. And then you can connect it to here and it'll just play this one first and this one and this one this one this one have many pins you add but that's not an issue for me in this situation so we're going to go ahead now we're going to add our physics interaction handle interaction so uh, i changed the name of it i know i called it something else but i just changed the name of it it's just whatever you call this event is what you got to call up here and this will then play through this and it just does it every tick checking the thing that stops it from just constantly doing it is it'll check to see if the physics handle is active. If it is active, and then it will just play everything else. So now that we have that in place, there's one more thing I want to change actually. I want to change our pickup distance. I'm going to set it to a thousand. And just for the purpose of testing, I'm going to set the uh, trace by object. We're going to turn it to four duration, which will just basically make it so the little line appears every time we press E and it gets a hit. So I've also changed where it full. I've just set it here when I was testing, but currently you can see I press E. I pick it up, I can turn around, you know, it does whatever. But I can't throw it away. I can drop it, but it doesn't actually throw. And if we press E again, we can pick it up. Now, occasionally, for whatever reason, as you can see just there, it did it. It doesn't actually, like, always work perfectly, the uh, line trace. Like, we've got it set so you can pick it up from a decent distance, but I guess the line trace isn't long enough, so... Uh, let's increase this again. Let's make it 2,000. Yeah. So now we can see the line trace is longer, but again, still sometimes it just doesn't work. So you will have issues with that sometimes. It really depends on um, the the line trace. You know, sometimes you get the hit for it and it will work. As you can see, that little red square that pops up. So pick it up. That red square basically is where your line trace is detected ahead. Sometimes it just doesn't. If anyone knows why, uh, you can share it in the comments with me. I'd like to know. I've done a little bit of research into it and as far as I can tell, it's not something that's easily fixable unless I've just done really shitty research. But it shouldn't be too big of an issue. It's just like occasionally it might work. You just keep pressing it and you can pick it up. Anyway, we now need to add our uh, code to make it so that we can throw it now. So in my case for throwing it, I'm going to make it so that whenever we press Q, it throws it. So we're going to go, we're going to go uh, Q, and then we're going to find, here we go, our keyboard pressed uh, Q. And we're going to drag out from here, we're going to go branch, and then from branch, we're going to make a physics handle active, connect that into our condition. And then we're going to drag out again, uh, actually no, we need a physics handle first. We're going to drag out from that, and we're going to go release component connect that to true okay and then from here we're going to go ahead and add an impulse so what the impulse does is it basically just adds a, a force i guess is another way of avoiding it it just basically uh shoots it out in whichever direction it is that you want uh if i drag out from this though i need to come all the way down here and go add impulse and then we connect this one now you can need to nut this little line if you want that's just how I have it set up. Okay, so now for our impulse, we're going to go from our follow camera. We're then going to go get uh, forward vector. And we're going to drag out and we're going to go times by float. And then I'm going to do an impulse of, let's say, uh, let's just do something really high. Let's do 10,000. Connect that one up. And then at the end of it, we need to make sure we set our physics handle active to false off I guess. Okay now when we go back in now we can make sure that when we press Q it's not moving so we haven't currently got it selected so when we press Q it shouldn't move. If it is moving you've just messed up so make sure you go back in and double check. But now when we press C we can pick it up and now when we press Q it will release it and throw it. Now if you want yours to throw uh, further you just got to increase your impulse. So to do that uh, you can do it one of two ways actually. You can just increase this number here. So let's say we make it something crazy. Let's go 100,000. Come back in and select our object again. 
and we press Q and I mean yeah it's <laughs> it's gone into orbit uh, you can do it that way so you can just increase this number I'm gonna leave it at I'll go like 15,000 or uh, another way to do it is if you come into your interactable object and you select the cube and then we select the mass say we set this to a lower number like five or something it'll make it go a lot further because the mass is how much it weighs we got 15,000 I think that's fine now you can run around you've got your objects say this was gmod you'd have your uh, your effects your lightning all your different things on your screen and then if I pick it up and then throw it, you'd have, you know, the lightning shoots out, the sound effect, whatever, and then you'd have it so that whenever this thing, uh, with a certain amount of force touches a, or a certain amount of velocity, sorry, touches a, uh, an enemy or whatever, you would then make it so that it destroys the actor and kills it. Okay guys, so I'm just going to quickly add this in at the end of the video. I forgot to explain how everything works, so I'm just going to quickly name this. This is, uh, press Q to... It's, uh through object let's bring this one down here okay so starting down here what happens here is whenever i press e it flip flops between uh turning physics handle physics handle active to true or false so what it does is every time i press e the first time it'll do this one sorry first time it'll do this one and then the second time it'll do this one third time it does this one fourth time it does this one and it just keeps going between both of them hence the name flip flop so the first time I do it, it will set physics handle to active, it will come down here and do a line trace for object. And then coming out of the follow camera on the player character, it will get the world location of it exactly. It gets the forward vector, it gets the pickup distance which we have set to 2000 and it can, uh, times is both of these by 2 and forward vector will always by default just be 1. So it's basically times in 2000 by 1 which sets it to 2000. And then it adds this uh, to the world location of the camera and then it puts that into the end, puts that one in the start. And then we have, uh, where is it? We have a break hit result. And then it does a get mass of the object that is, uh, the, what do we call it? The interactable object that is hit. And then as long as it, its mass is less than or equal to 500. So if we come here and click on our object, it's the sky. Uh, you can see if I select the cube. And then come down to mass in kilos it's to 10 but if i set that to anything higher than 10 it won't be able to uh, anything higher than uh 500 sorry it won't be able to pick it up all right and if we come back up here you can see from location we go into our get actor location so it's basically it's seeing where the hit result is so if we come in here the hit result is when i press e this little square that appears that is the exact position that my line trace hit this thing so it gets that position and then it minuses the actor location which is the player character and then that then becomes our vector lens which we turn into a float and we set that as our pickup distance and then we get our other item rotation which is just our character's rotation and then uh, as long as our condition is true which is a return value so as long as our line trace object hits something and then returns a value then this one will play and then as long as it is less than 500 in mass then this one will continue and it gets to our add physics handle object uh, component sorry and then uh, it just basically sets our player's uh called transform which is like the uh, rotation and everything so you can see here it's your rotation and your translation which is just a uh, position and then it uh, sets that to our physics handle and then our physics object is set here just so we have a save of it and then it gets, uh, sorry, it grabs the component at location. So it gets the bone name, which in this case, I'm pretty sure would just be the cube. In a, but like normally that would be like, uh, you grab the bone on a, a character's uh, skeletal model. And then it gets its grab location. And then it's uh, making sure that it's on our physics handle. And then the component is set to whichever object is hit at our hit components. So that would just be whichever, in this case, square it is that it hits. And then uh, currently, if you just had this code and nothing else, every time you pressed E on it, basically, if it was in the air and you pressed E on it, it would just make it float in the air. But then when we come up here, we have our physics handle interaction event. And this will only activate anytime physics handle is on. So basically from this point, it'll this little thing will always be running into this, but then it'll be getting stopped because we have it set up here that event tick is always running. And it is always trying to play the physics handle interaction which is this here and it will only ever actually do anything once physics handle active is set to true and it's only ever set to true right here 
So once it is set to true, it then tries to get the handle location, which is basically where the object should be sitting. So to do that, we get the axis location and then we add that to our, uh, our forward vector and then we add that to our other item location, which is this 250 units that we have it set out in front of us. So basically what this would do is it would get the actors location and then it would add these two together. Sorry, times is these two together because it's just a uh, one times 250. And then it adds them together and then it adds 50 on the Z axis so that it stands 50 units up in the air. Because currently if we didn't have that, it would just be on the ground with like 250 units in front of us. So now we have it come up a bit and then out. So if you want to increase how high or low it is, then you can either increase or decrease this number right here. And then we make sure that our physics handle is the valid one. If it is, we then set the circuit location and rotation. And then we set our handle location, which is again what I just explained earlier. And then we get the control rotation of the character and we give that exact same rotation to the object that's getting picked up. And then to throw it, we have that set to Q. You can set this to whatever you wanted. Uh, for me, we have it so that whenever the physics handle is active, or for me, for everyone, hopefully, <laughs> It said so the physics handle is active and then if that's true it will release the component which is the one that the physics handle is currently interacting with and then we add an impulse to it we add the impulse by getting our follow camera forward vector and that will give us the exact forward vector of whatever our follow camera is and then it times that by 15,000 so it adds a impulse of 15,000 to it and basically what this does is it just shoots it out so if you didn't have this you would just drop it on the ground if you don't uh, want your guy to like throw it, then you do not need this code at all. It will just release and drop it with this code here and this bit here. You don't need this part. This part only makes it so you can throw the object like you do in Half-Life. And then we just make sure that we set it again to false. If you had it always active, then it would be trying to play this one again and you would basically just never release it. And you wouldn't know how to let go of it. It would just constantly like pick it off. Oh, so one more thing I should quickly mention is if you want to have multiple uh, items that you can pick up what you should do is you should make a master object so in this case my master object will be this one here and then I'll make a child of it and then this child object instead of having a cube we will go ahead and turn this into a a chamfered cube and then we'll make this one smaller so we go 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0.5 we'll save that and then we will drag it out just to show you guys so now i can pick this one up and i can throw it around as long as our object is a child of the what i'm calling master one but the proper term is parent this is the parent one and this is the child one as long as whenever you go to make another object so say in half-life there's like the different boxes explodable things heaps of different things that you can pick up in it you need to make sure that you have your your parent which would be this one and then every other object you create in the game would be this one so make sure that this one has all of your defaults, don't give it anything special, just make it just like nothing basically, it would be the best way to do it. And then you would then take this one, and then you would make childs of it, and then you would then do all the different things that uh, differentiate it from just your, your basic object on this one. I hope that makes sense, that might not, but basically as long as your thing is a child of this one, sorry, a child of this one, then you'll be able to have as many items as you want and have them uh, all picked up. But uh, that's all for this tutorial. If you want to see anything else similar to this, like another video game mechanic, let me know down below in the comments and I'll be sure to show it. Uh, if you get stuck on this tutorial at any point and need my help, there will be a link in the description with the project file for this so you can look at my code and see how I did everything and compare it to yours. If that still doesn't help you though, you can uh, post a comment below and I'll help you out straight away. Anyway guys, this has been another UDT tutorial. I hope to see you next time.